What's up, Bulls fans? Welcome back. Last night, the Chicago Bulls lost to the Phoenix Suns 115 to 113 in a nail biter. And honestly, this is one of those games where Kevin Durant caught fire, and he is the sole reason the Suns were able to pull out the victory. If you don't count the refs calling ticky tack fouls, we're also going to talk about Kobe White and if maybe it's time for him to start taking those final shots at the end of games. You're also going to hear a little bit from DeMar DeRozan on his thoughts on that situation as well. All that right after the intro. Welcome to the Let's Talk Bulls podcast, your number one Bulls podcast in Chicago. Welcome back to Let's Talk Bulls, your number one Bulls podcast in Chicago. My name's Quentin. I'm your host. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Hit that subscribe button and hit that bell notification so you're notified when I drop more of these videos. And with that, let's get right into it. In this game against the Phoenix Suns, the Chicago Bulls started out playing great team defense. Okay, they were getting out on the fast break, and they were doing everything you want the Bulls to do in a game where they had to fight tooth and nail to get a victory against one of the best streaking teams in the league. Now, with that, they were also holding Kevin Durant very hostage from the three-point line and seeing the Suns have terrible shooting all throughout the team. Now, when you look at the game, when you look at the Bulls and how they normally play, there's not... A lot of games where they come out this hot, but even when they do come out playing well, halftime is the issue. So going into halftime, the Bulls were up big. It looked like the Bulls had control of this game. They had not lost the lead yet. And personally, in my head, I believe that they were going to screw it up. If I'm being 100% honest with you, I figured that after halftime, there was no way the Suns were going to continue to shoot that bad from the field. I believe Kevin Durant was like 0 for 7 from three-point line, which is just unheard of from Kevin Durant. So going into the second half, you knew he was going to step it up. You knew he was going to put some points in, and you knew Billy was not going to be able to make too many adjustments because he's just not good at that, and that's exactly what happened. Coming into the second half, going into the third and fourth, Kevin Durant caught fire and I mean the man was in fuego he was hitting threes hitting mid ranges Patrick Williams just couldn't guard him for shit like this was one of those games where it really showed you that even though Patrick is one of the best defenders in the league on ball there's certain players that are just that damn good and Kevin Durant is one of those players he took it to the Bulls 41 points or sorry 41 minutes 43 points six rebounds eight assists 16 for <laughs> For 32 shots and 6 for 15 from the three-point line, 5 for 6 from the free throw line. And honestly, Kevin Durant is the real reason that the Suns won. Because Devin Booker only scored 16 when you look at it. Bradley Bill scored 18. But in all honesty, if it wasn't for Kevin Durant, the, the Suns would have lost this game. And they probably would have got blown out. And that takes me to the second thing I want to talk about today, and that is the refs, right? So you could say that all of this was Kevin Durant. You can say, be one of those people who are a Suns fan who say, hey, the refs called it perfect. You can be a Bulls fan who's going to say, hey, the refs called it terribly. But somewhere in the middle, there's the point that the refs called some good fouls, and they also missed a few fouls. It looked like a game where the refs were letting contact happen, but it seemed like the Bulls were getting called for some really ticky-tack fouls that didn't make sense, right? Just little touches on the elbow, little bumps that maybe shouldn't have been called but on the other end you're talking the Bulls were getting called for fouls for these little things but Phoenix was over here bumping people off the center smacking people beside the head and getting everything they wanted from the refs and that's not something where I'm not one of those people who say the refs are paid off right that's not how the NBA works but I do think that there is a thing where the Bulls do not have they don't have the reputation of being that grinded out hardy team like some other teams do you get that from Caruso but you don't get it from the rest of the team and that's something you did see in this game they started to get a little bit more aggressive towards the end there were some chippy moments between Drummond and Eubanks but what happens is the Bulls need to keep that energy they need to keep that grit and that aggression all the time be one of those teams where you're not afraid to foul someone hard you're not afraid to get in there and do the dirty work for the team and i think drummond's definitely a player who could do that for the bulls now that takes me to the bulls though right we know kevin durant's great we know the bulls lost this game in a slight slight loss but when you look at the bulls game they didn't have a terrible game from their players right demar Derozan, 21 points five rebounds three assists 
Vucevic, 19 points, 7 rebounds, 7 assists. Kobe White steps up again, 26 points, 10 rebounds, 9 assists. He's so close to that damn triple-double. It's going to happen this year. You know it's going to happen. And for Phil Goats, he was 10 for 14 from the field, right? Kobe has been stepping up his game. And that takes me to something I do want to talk about. Kobe White, at the end of this game, was taking some clutch shots okay he was making things happen in the clutch getting to the rim and he was not afraid of the big moment coming down the wire Ready to go back and forth with them in the late fourth now that takes me to what i believe should be happening kobe white should start taking that last second shot for the bulls it's just something that needs to happen he needs to progress into that stardom for the team we see the martyr rosen take these shots most of the time and honestly i don't know if that's something where the bulls as players just trust DeMar more or Billy Donovan is running these plays specifically for DeMar and when I say running plays I mean he's telling them give DeMar the ball and move because there's no plays being run ever at the end of a game it's always just give DeMar the ball he'll figure it out and do something with it um, but when you saw Kobe White shooting so well playing aggressive looking like he was confident to have him not take the last shot when this is a young star that you're trying to build to be the future star of your team it doesn't make a lot of sense and what we're going to do is we're going to even listen to DeMar because DeMar apparently says that Kobe's able to take that shot so we're going to listen to that right now yeah, no doubt, without a doubt you know, um, and you know, if he got it rolling or even if he look at look at me and say, you know, he won it wouldn't be no problem. Take it. You know, we all, we all, you know, that's how, that's how much trust we got in, in him. You know, and I think even at night, coach was calling to play and Cole wanted to run something else. And coach said, you know, you got to say so too if you want to run that. You know, and, and um, you know, he kind of changed the play and, you know, Cole came down, was aggressive, made something happen out of it. But, you know, that's, that's the trust we got in him, whatever it is. If it's take the last shot or um, run the play, whatever it may be. And when you look at something like this, when you hear DeMar DeRozan sit there and say, hey, we trust Kobe. Kobe has to come in and say, hey, give me the ball. It's my shot. That begs the question. Is this something where Kobe is not ready to really step up and take those moments full on? Does he think that he has to kind of defer to DeMar? Or is it something where Billy has not told him, these are your moments? Who knows? But from hearing what DeMar said, hearing that they trust Kobe to make those shots, I hope that Kobe hears that and he takes that to heart. And in the next few games, we see him go, hey. I'm the one taking this pass because what has to happen is Kobe has to get in there and say, look, I know you want to run this play, but give me the ball. It's not going to somewhere else. It's going to me and I'm making the shot because that's the next level of what Kobe White can bring to this team. He's already improved on his dribbling. He's already improved on his shooting. He's improved on his rebounding. He's improved on his playmaking. Now he's got to get that killer mentality to finish off games. And that takes me to the rest of the team. Alice Caruso, 15 points, 4 rebounds, 5 for 12 from the field, but 5 for 11 from the three-point line. Alice Caruso is legitimately becoming a 3 and D player for the Bulls, right? Every time Alex has one of these games where he's just hot from three, it looks like he's becoming that three-point anchor for the Bulls sometimes. It's starting to make his value go up more and more, but it also makes you not want to trade him as much, right? If you can keep Alex and Alex plays great defense and he's getting shots in, now what do you do, right? But Alex is definitely one of the keys to this game. You got to love Alex Caruso, man. It's just he keeps proving why he is a Chicago favorite each and every game. Patrick Williams, 13 points, 4 rebounds, 2 assists, 3 for 8 from the 3. And Patrick also hit a late game 3 that was pretty clutch while the Bulls were trying to hold off the Suns. I got to give him credit. Him and Kobe really looked like they were ready for the big moments. But Patrick could have had, for me personally, a bigger game. He got into foul trouble a little bit early. And I honestly think that's something that did make it a little bit harder for him to guard Kevin. Because with him guarding Kevin Durant with fouls, he had to be smart. Kevin's really good at getting his defender to foul him. He's one of the best players, one, at getting to a mid-range shot, but two, at getting to the free throw line. And after last game Kevin not getting any free throws you knew he was coming out looking for that three-point shot you also had Ayo Sumu coming off the bench 30 minutes 13 points one rebound he didn't do much Andre Drummond six points five rebounds the Bulls played a good game 
This is one of those games where the Bulls played right. They did the things you need them to do, but they just couldn't hold out. They didn't know what to do with Kevin Durant. And at the start of the game, they were doing all the things I talked about in my pre-game video. They were getting out on the fast break. They held Booker. They stopped him from really getting off, especially off those pick and rolls. And they were getting out on the fast break, doing what they had to do and hitting their open threes. But the issue is they also were getting destroyed by Kevin Durant in the pick and roll. He was doing what he wanted whenever he wanted in that second half, and the Bulls just had no answer. They didn't know how to play him because once Alex Crusoe went out with foul trouble, this game took a major turn, and the Bulls just didn't have it in them to stop the Suns. So with that, what we're going to do, though, we have something new for you guys. We're going to talk about something for today. We're going to give out the first ever award on this channel we're gonna start doing this for the games this is gonna be the dog of the game <laughs> award the dog of the game award for tonight goes to drum roll kobe white Kobe White wins the first dog of the game award. And the reason I'm giving it to Kobe is not just because of his great play, but for him to really step up in the fourth, you saw him starting to take that leap towards trying to take those confident shots when the game is on the line, the moment is big, the lights are shining. Kobe White didn't let that push him down. He stepped up and he started to make shots. Now, he didn't get the last shot of the game, but I do think that seeing him take the steps to take the shots before that shot is a big, big move. Plus, the man almost had a triple-double. Okay, you got to give him that. Great game from Kobe. Great game from the Bulls. He just couldn't pull it off. Sometimes you lose the players who have great superstar talent. And Kevin Durant is one of those players who can turn the game over real quick by himself. With that, what I want to hear from you guys for this time is, do you agree? Who is your dog of the game let me know down below in the comment section and let me know how you guys feel about these videos are you rocking with the channel and what we're doing if you are make sure you hit that like button hit that subscribe button and hit that bell notification we're on our way to a thousand subscribers we're killing it on the youtube page and we are going to be the number one bulls podcast in chicago rocking your youtube channel on a weekly bases so with that i hope you all have a great night i hope you enjoy the video enjoy the content i'll see y'all next time peace